Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to DreamHack Beyond Playoffs. I am Tetra. This is still Crowan. That was a belter of a series and potentially what a lot of people could consider an upset. I'll, I'll go ahead and say I think that was an upset as well. I, I <laughs> went in there and I think other people were as well as saying Wild Heart, you know, they're both teams that struggled in this past CCL season. Wild Heart had more moments of greatness, but Granite Gaming is really turning up recently. But it's one thing to do it up against Wild Heart. It is another thing to go to do it against back-to-back -back CCL champion Simplicity. So we're in for a whole other ball game here. Their progression can look great versus one team, but it could just be an immovable wall against Simplicity. But excited to see how it's going to break down. Couldn't agree more, but we have to bear in mind that Simplicity struggled against one of the yeah. <laughs> two non-CCL teams in this tournament in series number one, almost losing two games to 30k blue, only losing one in the end. The third game, they were able to get some pretty good momentum and actually take a more controlled game, but this is not an undefeatable looking Simplicity. In one of the biggest tournaments of the year, Granite Gaming, they're showing up, they're looking okay. Simplicity, not looking at full strength, but they are still Simplicity. They are still Simplicity. That's always a Simplicity <laughs> factor of any game they can pop off. They're all very experienced players, right? Even if sometimes maybe the drafts aren't working out or they kind of just get a little bit, um, I'll say complacent. I think it's okay to throw yeah. that word out there when it comes to simpl Simplicity uh, uh, play sometimes. But I uh, don't want to see that happen here. Of course, this is going to be the DreamHack Beyond Playoffs. This is the culmination of all those qualifiers. It is the peak of Heroes competition at this point after the CCL, of course. So Simplicity still are going to have some more juice there. And they're a team that do ramp up over the course of a season, over the course of course of a tournament. So I think that it's very um, possible. I don't want to say likely, but I'll say possible that the um, slip ups that we saw Simplicity have earlier, they could probably just have, you know, warmed up, got the jitters out and are looking to be a lot cleaner in this series potentially. There's also the fun factor if you brought up that they scale over the course of a tournament, but the majority yeah. of teams in this in these playoffs have been playing almost exclusively CCL for the last several months, which was a game weekend. Yeah. <laughs> compared to sure. the more grueling tournament system where you have to push through a little bit more. But they have all played in tournaments and these are mostly ex-professional players who have yeah. been to their fair share of events and online tournaments and cups. They are going to be comfortable with this kind of format, but it does give you that ability to scale as opposed to coming in cold to a series and going out cold in a series. Definitely. So I believe we do actually have the map picks we do. Um, coming through. So yeah, it looks like Granite Gaming went for first pick. The bands going be Simplicity Bang, Braxis, and Battlefield of Eternity. Granite Gaming banning Sky Temple and Garden of Terror. And Simplicity Ooh. picking Tomb of the Spider Queen. So once again, going into a series that starts off with Tomb of the Spider Queen. I feel like that happens so much nowadays. Tomb's just yeah. such a standard, like, all right, let's feel it out kind of map. Teams are going to be prepped for it and no one really uh, hates it enough to ban it away most of the time. A little bit brawly, you can assist your offlaner a lot. If you find out that your opposing offlaner is really scary, you get slightly outdrafted, you can actually assist the lanes a little bit more easily compared to a map, say, like a Towers of Doom or a Garden of Terror or Dragonshire, where the offlaner is going to be a little bit more isolated and global heroes could gain a little bit more priority. So yeah, like you said, it's a great way for feeling out the strength of your opponents and finding out what you can do, but of course, you do still have to play it very strategically. You gotta have those beefy frontliners who can actually pick up the gems. If you get zoned out, and if you get interrupted on your four-man rotation, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, I'm curious actually as well with you talking about these potential picks that could come through. How are Granite Gaming going to approach this? Because the Granite Gaming that I'm used to seeing is one that just picks a very aggressive, like melee focused uh, picks for especially Ultralisk and Sug just running at the, the enemy heroes trying to get some takedowns. But I think Granite Gaming last series showed that they can play a more scaling style uh, yeah. composition with like, you know, the Vala and the Falstad just offering some peel. Tyrael even was in there as well and they won with it. I'm kind of surprised to, to see that come through, but I, I am also impressed as well. So are they going to continue to approach the tomb the same way with the Vala pick? Simplicity, of mm. course, has kept track of that series that, that just happens. So they're maybe going to be thinking about banning of Vala, but you can't let Skoke have stitches either. So there's a lot of <laughs> things to consider in this coming up draft, and especially the, the opening ban phase. 
These two teams actually have kind of similar drafting styles when it comes to that, with Stitches yeah. being a pick from Simplicity in Series number one, and they them running their own Valakob as well. So there's a lot of competing picks between these teams. Obviously, during CCL, Granite Gaming were one of the teams who got that big reputation as a Stitches team, though. So like you say, <laughs> will it get banned out? Will they even let him have it? Or do they have a plan around it? Yeah, maybe. It could be just a bit of a mind game, like, oh, we're, we're not going to ban Stitches, but then we're going to force you to either ban it or give it up in, like, a first pick kind of scenario. Uh, we'll see, because that it's either, I don't know, it could go either way, honestly. Yeah. Uh, we were waiting on a member, but I think we actually do now have yeah, all the members a in the lobby. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not Hosty. even a DU player. Weak! I know, right? It's not even... I don't remember what time zone host he's in. He's in Canada somewhere, but it, yeah. it's not even that late, Hosty. Come on, get your head in the game. We got everyone now. We're gonna you get into the draft shortly. to win, bro. I know. Oh my god. Yeah. Ultraresk is literally in chat saying he has to be up at 6am tomorrow, which is in... From his time, he's an hour ahead of me. In about four hours. So he's got four hours Yikes. to win, fit in sleep, and then wake up for work. This Good tournament luck. could go, I mean, I guess it's probably not going to go four hours more, but yeah, uh, this is the it, could, yeah, it could go a couple <laughs> more hours. There's a show match at the end of this, right, as well? There is, yeah. Um, yeah. Storm. So, yeah, we still got a lot of games going here tonight. I believe we are finally loading on into the draft of Tomb of the Spider Queen. And again, it is going to be, um, who was actually first pick? I lost it. It is Granite. Feels bad. Granite, okay, Granite being first pick. Yeah, the first pick, first ban. I think I'll start this one off. Let us see which team's going to prioritize. Maybe that Stitch saw that Valor, or are there other big high-priority picks? We know Cure has his Zeratuls, his Malthael's. Oh, yeah. There's the Leorix that they fit in quite a lot throughout CCL Season 1 and also a lot more recently. It's going to be curious to see what is the priority. You can see the timer being run yeah. all the way down because they share so many of these heroes. <laughs> They're thinking about it. I mean, I, how it goes tournaments, obviously, like, a lot of times players are, are focused on their first series and kind of take it one step at a time. Like, you do a little bit of prep for your following series, but you're mainly going to be focused on, you know, just getting past that first one. So they're running out this uh, this this clock. They did ban the Junkrat. And Junkrat mm. and Zagara are kind of filling similar roles, I think, but both of them are banned out. They're not going to have a lot of just insane lane bullying and, uh, and wave cleared there, as well as Junkrat does provide a little bit of, you know, CC follow-up potential. Uther Banner follows up for Granite Gaming. So Simplicity going to ban the Stitches, or will they give it over? It Ooh, looks like they they're going to potentially be giving it over. Vala being more highly prioritized, and for good reason. We've seen just how scary it can be, even post every single nerf it's had to deal with recently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the Stitches being given over. But the question is, is it still worth the first pick for Granite Gaming? On this map, it's very strong. But yeah. it obviously gives Simplicity a lot of time to react and draft around it, say perhaps Anduins or stuff like that. They don't. They take the Stuck off, and that opens it up for potentially the the killer opening of Stitches and Furion from the side of Simplicity if they wanted. But they don't either. It's being let through. All right, going to be Tychus plus Blaze. Blaze still a fantastic offlane pick. Uh, Kira going to be very well practiced on that, as well as the other... Uh, assassin threat, but with that being picked up, maybe we can, uh, you know, not be forced to be scared of into a mouth ale or a Zera tool or something like that in the back half of this draft. Stitch is still being up. I feel like Granite Gaming. I mean, yeah, yeah I feel like you gotta <laughs> go for it in the two three. The argument I think is correct to not pick it in the first pick, but now that it gets to the two three, like for sure, it, it's no surprise to see it at this point. Yeah, Bla Blaze is someone you preferably don't want to hook because he is very tanky and can escape very easily and has that unstoppable. But Tychus, he's more reasonable. He can get a lot of armor and is one of the harder assassins to kill overall because of the amount of armor he can get and his mobility. But if you hook and you gorge, they're still probably going to perish. <laughs> There's not a yeah. huge amount you can do about that. What do you think of the possibility? Because you mentioned the less likelihood of us seeing potentially a mouth ale. What do you think the possibility are, is of the potential blaze swap to main tank? So the potential, the potential is there. Do I think it's going to be great in this matchup? No, not really. It's kind of awkward sometimes for Blaze to, I, I think, step up. And if he goes a bit too far, forces you know uh, um, some uh, the jet propulsion uh, away. I think it can get punished. So I, I think we're likely to see Blaze or main in the off lane. But I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure what these teams have been quite practicing, um, you know, recently in their scrims or anything like that. Um, but I do think it's likely that it'll remain it as an offlane pick. Medivh and Sylvanas come through as the second round bans. 
Yeah. Uh, Medivh obviously very good into a Stitch's pick and save pretty much anybody. Anduin now coming through as well, as long as Anubarak. So yeah, there will be just a solid frontline tank Anubarak coming out from Masquerade. Makes sense. The Masquerade is going to give them that frontline. Beetles can block hooks. The ability to dive after somebody who was hooked, cocoon the Stitches to stop him running away uh, before yeah. a gust comes out could really help them out here. And of course, the Anduin is the ultimate saving hero <laughs> for a Stitches. The only thing better is if you can 100% drop a pre-cleanse every single time. And I don't know of any cleanses that have a 12-second cooldown. <laughs> so in this case, makes a lot of sense to pick up the Anduin because you either pull them back or you put a bomb on them at home. Okay, Granite Gaming picking Tassadar and Leoric. Mm. So their only damage dealers are like Falstad Tass. I feel like I haven't seen a draft like this in actually forever, at least not in my memory. But they are going to be able to still scale quite well now with Tracer coming out for the side of Simplicity. Lutano going to be one of the best Tracer players that I can remember, at least now. And this here is the Storm Competitive ecosystem. I'm scared for Granite Gaming's um, draft, I think. They need to not get punished early, but the tools are there to punish them from Simplicity with the Blaze, the Anubarak, and the Tracer always being so aggressive, I think, in the early game. Lutano tries to always find those little bits of damage to get through, and again, really nothing to punish him. Yeah, Tassadar doesn't exactly have the best ability to escape or counter a Tracer at no. all. Falstad can do a little bit with the Static Shield. If Tracer does jump on him, he can protect himself a little bit better there. But they don't have the crowd control to keep Tracer still. No. This isn't like the Garrosh game we saw earlier where they were just able to taunt it. It is interesting because that Tracer's going to be pressuring the back line, but Tassadar is going to add a lot to the ability to isolate members with this hook style composition. It's very much leaning into one strat, but the Tassadar definitely allows them to keep up a little bit more in terms of damage. For now, though, we're going to be heading into game number one, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tomb of the Spider Queen. And on the left-hand side, it's your two-time, two-time CCL <laughs> champions. It is Simplicity with Hostion Tychus, Cure on the Blaze. It's Lutano on that Tracer, Masquerade in the Nubarak, and the Legacy is playing Anduin. And over on our red side, we're going to have Granite Gaming. Going to have Fawcett be played by Ultralisk. Going to have Henning on the Stukov, Ty on the Tassadar, Swampfruit on the Liark, and Skog on the Stitches. Very cool to see, looking at these level 1 talents, Adrenaline Stimpak, not going for that unstoppable. You're mm. just going for hyper-fast wave clear and a little bit of trade ability, and straight in for the stun here, the chain is long, but the stuck of silence is enough to zone everyone away and get Skoog out of there. Yeah, Skoog really shouldn't ever fall there, especially pre-Tracer farming up her uh, Pulse Bomb, so not going to be threatened to die there. A lot of it is going to, I think, be on what can Simplicity accomplish in the early game, and what are they going to get uh, punished with? And, okay, Masquerade being forced to burrow charge away. Skoog is so tanky. If Skoog's able to absorb so much damage um, like that, they can, I think, always go for turns in that scenario. Tykers will eventually be able to help out with that and will be able to bully Skook a little bit more once he gets that, the bigger they are at level 4. And of course, the later the grenade build goes, the better chance they have of killing it. But Stitches is ridiculously tanky, so that will help a lot. And he also has that bonus healing at level 1 with the very standard these days patchwork creation. Gets that yep. extra healing and regen and a little bit of armor. The armor less of an effect against Tykers, but will help against Tracer and Blaze. Definitely so. As mentioned, Blaze not the unstoppable. Wants to get a bit more wave clear, a bit more damage coming through. Maybe supplementing, of course, those nerfs that came through recently. Um, but they are already going to be aggressively taking out the Bruiser camp. Get priority on it. Granite Gaming a little bit behind. But generally, actually, the team that caps the Bruiser camp uh, later will be able to get the counter push. Simplicity, though, is very intelligently saying we're not going to try to get any push done with that mid camp. We're going to just rotate to the bottom, force you to rotate there, be able to clear mid, and just be one step ahead in these rotations. Makes sense right now. The rotation is looking solid for both teams enough, but like you said, there is a small advantage being gained. Ultralisk being absolutely body blocked here, but Barrel yes. just dodging out the way of that hail. We're going to see that electric fence. We're going with that Psystorm wall build that's become so popular these days. Just misses catching Tracer with it. Utano does hook behind the minion wave. Skoog hooks a minion. 
It's not going to be rather safe there. A uh, great job of Granite Gaming to clear, but they still are noticeably falling behind in experience already. They're about a half a level, maybe a bit less than half a level down. Ultralisk is chunked out, so uh, if Hosty gets a grenade, Mosca gets a stun over the wall, that can be a very dead false set. Wow, a grenade actually canceling Ultralisk's roll there, it looked like. Ooh. So we'll not have that available for a few more seconds. And one tower already goes down. Simplicity, macro game, looking very strong. This has been taking quite a few hits this game. Like you said, the macro game is looking good, but Hosty maybe becoming first blood, able to get behind the minions and away from Spook. But that electric fence from Ty is causing a lot of problems here. All these dashes, all these teleports from the side of Simplicity, but only Burrow Charge could really make their way through the Force Wall. Force Wall going to be good. Electric Fence, such a good talent, I think. Even with the, the yeah. slow providing as well, I think is going to set up a lot of potential kills. Uh, I'm sure you see level 20. Oh yeah, 100 <laughs> percent We got a long way to go until we get there, but Tomb usually does go to level 20s, I would say, unless it's a insane mid-game from one team or another. Lyoric is gonna be a nice Wraith block there to not get stunned. Mosca being pressured. Lutano eats the hook, but can blink on out of there. A lot of gems already turned in by simplicity. Again, the macro, the wave or, or the the kind of map priority means that they're going to get priority on the turn-ins as well. One more gem. Legacy has it. Can you get it in? I like it. Master Assassin oh. coming in, by the way. Goodbye, Tassadar. Great shot there from Blaze. But Master Assassin coming in from the Tychus. First stack is acquired with that kill. <laughs> Not going for the bigger they are to kill Stitches. Instead, committing a little bit more into quick percentage damage and a little bit of Odin race. Yeah, so that's very interesting. I, I kind of... I, I, don't, I don't know if I like it, but I understand it coming through because Tracer, it feels pretty bad if you're just stuck hitting a Stitches for a while, but what Tracer can do is have backline access hit the, the targets like the uh, the Stukov, the Tassadar, the False Dead, and Tychus being Odin'd up and follow up on that damage um, from a pretty safe range. So it makes sense why Tychus go Master Assassin here. Generally doesn't even get completed, but hey, maybe we'll see it being completed in this game. <laughs> Gotta get, we've had some very low kill games so far this tournament. Let's see if they could turn that round. Simplicity looking to pile the pressure on Cure, pulls aggro with his AoEs, gone for his incinerator gauntlets to help with that race. Skook has been ganked, but it is Skook and it is Stitches and he's out. Wall, putting a lot of peel there. Hook does not connect. Maybe a 13 uh, hook would have, but we're not quite there yet. Level advantage about after that turn in from Simplicity. They get all of the bottom fort mid wall and are immediately once again turning their attention to these mercenary camps. Simplicity not letting up at all. The pressure is consistently there. Granite Gaming has not found any kills. The hooks that come through are not able to uh, result in anything. Mask is doing a good job at making sure he he knows where Skoog is, and so the enemy or the rest of the members of the friendly team there will not be able to get hooked, get pressured at all. Absolutely, just trying to avoid that because that is the win condition. Of course, it's going to get worse as the game goes on. Look at the spawn timers come in, so they just have to be able to keep this up all game. No problem, no issue, but here's level 10 for Simplicity. They're looking to make the play. They're looking for it. Cocoon comes out in the stitches, and now that's going to be a very quickly dead Stukov. Looking for more as well. No level 10s for Granite Gaming. Means that this Bruiser Camp invade is successful. This is going to result in a fort kill at the least. Double Bruiser Camp. This could be the wall going down of the keep and mid keep as well, but another kill even falls to that stays around way too long. The disrespect there. This could even result in a kill, perhaps, Tetcher. Or a kill on the keep, perhaps, Tetcher. They can certainly try. They've got that Master Assassin for an extra 10% attack speed boost <laughs> yeah. on that Odin, so it's a little bit of extra DPS here as they try to force their way forward. Front gate. Getting blasted, but lurking arm coming to the rescue there, completely zoning everyone away from the gate so they cannot follow up and chase. Now the Granite Gaming 10s are too soon on the horizon. They're going to want to dump their gems and uh, don't have quite enough for a turn in yet. Just need one more wave to do so. Granite Gaming thinks that they might be on the boss, says, yeah, I might have uh, gone to boss while Simplicity as well. Though I think that was an intelligent recognition of Granite Gaming. It's going to be wrong, however. Um, group trying to get 48 gems in, but Cure's already here. The Simplicity are a step ahead of where Granite Gaming are at all points of the game. They're not going to let this turn in come through easily, but Tychus on the bottom side has the gems. And here we go, another Blue Web Weaver phase.
Blizzard Team looking very strong right now. They have control of the map. They've got those lanes pushed up. Falston and Tassadar have been trying to soak their team back into this. Granite Gaming on the back foot. But they have their pick top down. They have level 10s. Gorge, Gust, Entomb, Flailing Swipe, and Archon. Archon less for the pick potential, but because it's really good. In this yep. case, if they land hooks, there's a good chance whoever they hook is going to die. Legacy is going to have to be in position. There is the Gorge. Legacy, he's coming as fast as he can. Masquerade just has to survive. And he does hold over the force wall. <laughs> Easy escape. Yeah, I was saying it's likely if they're going, they're going to die unless they're a new Brack because you have the mobility, and then you have Anduin <laughs> there to pull you as well. So much distance means that that's going to be gorged down 40 seconds. Allows Blitzy to walk forward and now pressure the keep. And Granite Gaming is forced to be Ooh. split right now, right? The cocoon comes out on Tap Star, maybe a kill potential. Nice, oh, no, nice gust. gust. And the friendly hook, dodging Cure as well. Bunker's drop, Force Wall was cutting off his escape, so a well-timed Bunker as Cure on the run, trying to get out of here. Lutano recalling back, dropped the bomb. Entomb is dropped, catches Hosty, but there's no one there to follow up. So is just gonna die here as he is able to get out, actually. Holds onto those 54 gems, and that is a huge deal. The keep went down, but we do see Granite Gaming holding on to everything else. Yeah, Granite Gaming, at the very least, is holding on to all these gems, so they have a potential comeback condition if they are able to chain a kill, get an even talent tier, and then chain some turn-ins through there. But Simplicity does not want to allow that to happen. They want to continue to put this pressure on. They're waiting for Falstad to check the bush, but uh, fortunately for Granite Gaming, Ultralisk is going to be a bit smarter than that, as I'm smelling something fishy here. Checks the bush even. Good job. Now Stitches, maybe, can get something done. And look for another hook. Gorge is back and available. It comes out. Not landing no. this time. Masquerade already on point. Good vision. Avoiding it. Preventing the death. It's got those burning beetles now as well. So they're going to be able to help with wave clear. And still more beetles means more chances to block the hooks. Exactly. That's a key factor. Not only is there co the, the, the cocoon from the new Breck factor. Um, dissuading the Stitches threat, but it's going to be the Beatles as well. They're so annoying. And Masquerade has done such a good Ooh. job at keeping track of Skoog this whole time, but now it's going to get hooked. Can he escape again? Probably. Light bomb, Gust. Masquerade's still there, but he still has Burrow Charge to get out of here. He's just trying to delay it. Dives over the wall to get to his team. The Oryx already dead here. Lutado is getting kinda a 1v1 by Ty, but Ty is running out of health. Oh. Shield does not recharge. Ending dies on the other side. And that is a quadruple kill for Simplicity. Chasing down Skoog. We said they were going to struggle to kill Skoog, so their solution is don't as they begin <laughs> to pressure the other keep. They just kill everybody else. They have the Tracer. Tracer exactly. gone to the back line and killed the Tassadar. The rest of the members, I mean, the Orc fell so early there. And with that, I believe it was about 40, maybe even like 50 gems that were going down as well. At Simplicity. Least 54. Yeah, 54. There's going to be the keep not going down the bottom side. Simplicity probably can't end the game because it's a bit too early for that. But they're still going to be having such control of this map. Level 16s now, while Granite Gaming is 13. You know, I was saying earlier, Tetra, maybe some Plissy has <laughs> needed that warm-up for them to look dominant, and they certainly are doing that right now. Only the one kill for Granite Gaming came because Lutano chased a bit far, did trade the kill out for the Tass Star, however. So it was worth. Hashtag worth. It is worth for now as they're trying to make it even more worth to pick up as Grotta. Spinning away. Friendly Ooh. hook gets him out. All right. Oh, oh no. Hosty! Hosty with the snipe kill at the end there. That is... Bad news. It is Leoric. He will be back quickly. But this is very bad news for Granite Gaming. They are behind. They need that experience, but they're just going to have to either defend this boss on their last keep or take this fight down 16. Falstead is not flying. Looks like they've opted for the former. No, I mean, Leoric will be back fast, but not fast enough, right? Still five seconds left on the respawn timer before Simplicity does convert this boss on over. Skoog has to find something and finds a hook onto Hosi. The gorge comes through. This could be it. Maybe we're gonna give me knees. Coming. Coming. He's got two pulls. Pull one into the entomb though. <laughs> but where's the damage follow-up? It's just size storm. Falstad was in the was in the cocoon. They can't follow up, bro. Oh man, such distance once again. Nice entomb though, but as you mentioned, no damage. Where is it gonna come through? 
the Ultralisk now after the Cocoon is going to be just chunked out, forced to disengage, Simplicity pushing down still more than half HP left on this boss, the Odin is going to expire, this is maybe the time of Granite Gaming to do something. Lightbulb Blink sets up the death of Henning, meaning no more healing. Masquerade does die in exchange, though, and everyone else on Granite looks pretty healthy. Simplicity back it up. They push onto the boss. The keep goes down their last line of defense, but they still get the hook onto Hosty. Second pull, Ultralisk is popped, and the core will not go down yet, but the last line of defense has fallen for Granite. This looks just like a slow bleed out at this point for Granite Gaming. All keeps down. All keeps are, are all forts are even still up on the side of Simplicity. All the wells are up. Now Simplicity is just going to wait for a new brag. Get all the camps their way. Have close to enough gems for turn in. Not quite though. Granite Gaming is still not even found their first turn in at this point. Simplicity can allow it to come through though. They don't want to throw this game. They can just wait for level 20s to come through. They'll get it very very soon and be able to start that death push with a turn in of their own. Let's see if they can do it. it. The chance is there. It's late game stitches. There's always the possibility to True. get that turn around once you get those big elongated hooks. Lutano continues to just try and keep the map blue by harassing everyone on Granite Gaming as a turn in does come in from Granite Gaming. Yeah. Scoog demounted. Hook doesn't land. That is bad news. They need Gust. Bit of an awkward cocoon, probably could have just killed Skoog, but instead now is going to turn on. Falstad dies in the meantime off on the side. Skoog gets a Desperation Gorge, but it's not going to do anything again. There's just no damage. Edding trying to fling Swipe to protect Skoog. Hosty walks forward. The rest of Simplicity walk forward. Masquerade even getting a stun onto Stukov in the back line. This is going to be another kill, and they're going to march on to the core, Tetra. This should be game number one right here, right now. They're or not, maybe though. Not. They're clearing the Web okay. Weavers. They... <laughs> I think they could have gone core there, but they're <laughs> spending a little bit of time clearing out. They want to make sure they can do it with a 100% chance because there's always the chance we could see that force wall change this fight. There's always the chance that Leo could get a big heavy in tomb to turn it. It's unlikely. Maybe it's too safe, but Simplicity are taking it safe. It, it does feel a bit of, of kind of that too safe, but I mean, I guess it's fine. Now they're 20s. Now they're going to get a turn in. It should be game either way. It's maybe there's like a 1% higher chance of not thro or of not throwing <laughs> yeah. the game right now. But sure, if you're in Simplicity spot, you can afford to go for those things. Gear, though, and a little caught out in Tomb comes okay. through. Forces Gear to uh, charge beyond it. But now the team is here from Simplicity to support him. And look at Masquerade's positioning here. Running straight at Skoog. If anyone's going to be hooked while we chase down this, um, this Leoric, it's going to be me, the person with the best chance to escape. Nice position on that hook from Skoog, but it was blind. Didn't have the sight to see it. They say, look for Lutano. They were trying to try and gorge him just out of the silence. They're cut off from their base here. Tiger's running away. That is 100% a dead heading, though. If there was any CC on the side of Granite Gaming, maybe they could catch Lutano, but again, there isn't. Lutano gets to just do whatever he wants. Ultralis just flies on over the core because, uh, and sits in the Hall of Storms because you're not gonna be coming back <laughs> in this game. Is going to, of course, be Simplicity. Closing this one out finally. 15 kills to 2, 4 level lead. This is the Simplicity that we were expecting. Game number one to Simplicity, and like you said, they seem to have found their footing and <laughs> gained their momentum. That is a solid first win. Coming literally off of this recent weekend, becoming our champions in CCL, and now they're playing in the highest level that is DreamHack, and they are showing exactly why Simplicity is the name to be feared in Heroes of the Storm right now. 15 kills to two. Yeah, and the two kills were only when Lutano trade out for the Tassadar, and then when Masquerade was like one for four or one for three kind of trade on, I believe, a topside team fight. It was, I'll say, a draft diff. If Granite Gaming didn't fall so far behind and they got to a Tassadar level 20, like that was their scaling condition, that was their win condition. But the Tracer is just going to be able to abuse that so much, and they would need to have been just a much stronger team in general to uh, be able to hold on that long, but Simplicity were the stronger in this in this scenario. So uh, yeah, they're gonna be able to abuse Granite Gaming, which they, they did very much so. This is still only game number one. Can Granite Gaming bring it back and try it and create the reverse sweep to move into those grand finals? We'll have to see, there's still plenty of time. 
the Anduin was pretty good. <laughs> I think we're safe to say we know that Anduin is a great counter to the Stitches, but just yeah. in general, the synergy between Legacy and Masquerade was just money. The hooks just never felt impactful. Yeah. You can tell, and this is this is so such an important, such a key factor. But you can tell, simplicity just knows where to stand at all points, like in a yeah. team fight or leading up to one. Whereas a lot of teams like don't, and that's what comes into like a lot of like hours like VOD review, being like, oh, where should you have been in that scenario? But simplicity just has that innate sense of knowing where to be. That happens when legacy is going to be in exact and uh, when pull range to, to pull members to safety. We saw that when Masquerade was standing out so far ahead in that kind of top lane and making sure that Stitches can't get any single value. They recognize not only their own win conditions, but they recognize the win conditions of the enemy team and they know how to stop them like well ahead of, of where anything could even <laughs> happen there. So I just love them working not only synergizing together as a team, but then knowing how to deny the enemy team at the exact same time. So we'll have to see if they're able to do that consistently. And do we see them react to that Stitches anymore? <laughs> Do we see Granite go for it again because we've seen that Simplicity seems so on point, but it only really takes one really good Stitches hook to change a series. Yeah. But how confident are Granite Gaming going to be and how much are they going to rely on it, or is it time to switch up the strategy? Might be time to switch it up a little bit. There's always the Stitches hook factor, but actually, you gotta have some damage after the Stitches <laughs> hook. And they didn't have it that game. <laughs> you can look at them all you want, drag them into your team, but. Allstead and Tassadar were just not enough. Um, yeah. I think Granite Gaming will have to go back to the drawing board when it comes uh, to the draft. I think that the initial, like one, two, three, the initial phase was fine, but um, I don't know. It kind of it got away from him after after a point. Yeah. I mean, the Tassadar I still like. I love the idea of putting yeah. down that Force Wall and doing that, but it was Psy Storm based build, which only really gets decent damage. Once you hit level 16, once you get that quicker Psy Storm, which makes it a little bit better as a hook follow-up. Falstead yeah. went auto-attack build, which is a little bit slower to come online, comes, but it comes online a little bit earlier level-wise at level 13. But again, you still have to hold them still long enough to do that. You talked about the damage, you talked about the CC, they were very reliant on hook, and it just didn't add up to enough. Yeah, no, it had to be just like the scaling uh, coming through, being on at least even footing uh, the tasks are, but again didn't quite work out so i believe we do have our second map pick it's going to be dragonshire so <laughs> it's the same as last series it goes from doom straight to dragonshire <laughs> so uh all right here we go again now i want to see the priority of more of these global picks um i am looking at you know heroes like the dahaka like the brightwing yet again and the false side which we did see in the last game didn't really have a lot of impact but it definitely can when it comes to uh getting some uh, picks on the offlanes. We'll have to see if they're able to do that. Like you say, getting picks on the offlanes are so important. In the first series, we actually saw a creative use of Dahaka and Hogga together, just to make sure that they had that global potential. Either one could take over the top lane at any point and use that global to try and assist it. I have to see if a similar thing is done with the Brightwing, like I said earlier. Maybe Falstead makes a return with in a composition where he's able to do the damage or has someone to supplement that damage. Yeah, I insist. I'm, I'm curious. I think Simplicity has a lot of ways that they're comfortable with playing. Granite Gaming has shown prowess in, in a couple of different scenarios, like not just uh, going back to they, they don't just rely on the, the compositions where they're going to have to run at you early, relying on the heavy CC. But uh, it does seem like they get a bit lost uh, when it comes to how to uh, adapt away from that. And it could just be because Simplicity is just so much of a stronger team where they can't get away with that adaptation in style. Um, but I'm not sure. I, I, I think I would like to see them kind of try a similar thing again, with maybe just some some different picks uh, in the mix. So you see, I like the idea. Some different picks someone with a little bit more instant blow up would be lovely. Yeah. Let's see what they go for as we are starting off with the first ban. Kel Supreez, we will likely see Zagara as the first ban from one of these <laughs> teams. Yeah, Not this time. Junkrat. Uh, it was Junkrat Zagara that opened it up uh, last time. So Simplicity is going to stick true to the there script. Yep, <laughs> Zagara <laughs> does come through. Um, but this is where we can start to open things up, and we can start to maybe be like, hey, maybe the Stitches ban can come through. Um, maybe Granite Gaming says we don't want to play it because it didn't work out, but we also don't want to let Simplicity get it either. That factor could come through. Let's see what's in their mind. They are drawing out this timer kind of far. 
Very true. There's also a couple of offlaners who could get priority bans. Hogger is one who is quite yeah. popular amongst a lot Blaze, of top laners. Maybe. Ah, they know Masquerade. Banning out that Uther. <laughs> Uther ban coming through. That's going to be a nice one. Uther is still so priority uh, for a lot of different teams and a lot of different uh, compositions. and kind of slot on into anywhere. Stitches ban or no? Probably not. It was the Vala ban that came through last game. Denying that away from Ty, I think for good reason. Let's see if it's going to be the same thing again. Let me see. Mm -hmm. The stuck no. off ban. All right. It's still a decent follow up for a hook if you can get it under, as a drop. Mafurian is a, the most reliable, but stuck off is still potentially the highest priority support, especially seeing as the. Uh, especially as Lucio recently received a pretty severe nerf to his high five. Yeah. So it's a solid ban, and that is an early pick on the Rexar, just going for that top lane control. Yeah, Rexar priority yet again. We saw it in a previous series um, yeah. ahead of a Dahaka. And I mean, I, I think it really did work out. Rexar can, it looks like, win that matchup or at least have shrine control. And that's going to be. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> An instant response of the Zeratul. Usually with simplicity, I believe, draft Zeratul. It's going to be like in the 4 or 5 later on in the draft, but they're already aggressively going for it right here. How can Granite Gaming respond to it, though? Because Gear Zeratul, it, it can dictate the whole pace of the game. So the usual counters to a Zeratul would of course be a point and click CC. This would be a Brightwing Poly, stolen, an Uther stun, <laughs> banned, and, yeah. and uh, Varian, potentially, is still potentially, and oh, there he is, go. or Garrosh, who is reliant on where the Zeratul is. These would be like the big high priority ones, and only one of them really seemed available to that they're going to go with Varian Lee Ming and just pick, this person will die, hopefully. Yep. Good luck. And this is a style that Granite Gaming, again, is very familiar with. This person dies, you know, we run at them, a Lee Ming follow-up, very telegraphed, gonna be hard to uh, deny. Rebbing does have a cleanse on, what, like a 90 second cooldown, so uh, the saving members are gonna be very few and far between. Lucio Ben coming through, Lucio, while he was nerfed, is still a, a decent pick, a, a solid pick. Um, but I'm looking at supports maybe like Malfurion coming through from Granite Gaming, I think that would be a fantastic option. Um, there is the potential for something else, but I think Malfarian's probably on the top of their list. It's a nice follow-up CC, to be able to help the Leeming out as well. Giving them a little bit of mana, giving them solid healing if they need to go deep, and of course having that Tranquility or Twilight Dream. Twilight Dream potentially is a follow-up for Varian, Tranquility for the extra armor to protect the team from Zeratul could yep. be very helpful. So yeah, definitely like the idea of the Malfurion. It's oh. suddenly become a lot more difficult though to escape from a lot of these, and a lot more difficult to actually kill people with this variant composition with Medivh entering play. I can understand why Granite Gaming wanted to ban out a new Barak, but I think the Medivh probably would have been, uh, I mean, hindsight, sure, 2020, but uh, Medivh is going to stop the Varian Leeming blow up in its tracks and also allow the time <laughs> for whatever tank is picked to get into the backline, punish these non-mobile heroes like a Rexar, like a Malfurion. Imperius actually being picked up as uh oh four man imperious it looks like because rex yeah. gonna be the gonna be the the, the off lane what do you make of the toucher i, I kind of like it myself but curious is your thoughts on it First, i pick. love the idea of adding in a second uh a third frontliner in this yeah. case because you're kind of screwed otherwise because you are just going to be completely shut down by that mediv so the counter reaction the counter strategy here is if we keep you down if you, we keep you locked down long enough eventually force of will will expire <laughs> And hopefully you will die. It also gives them the flexibility of, like you say, putting that Imperius in the four man, or sending it to the top lane, or sending Varian to the top lane as Rexar. Those ogre, uh, ogre orc auto attacks do actually chunk really well, yeah. and it is still another CC follow up. So you can actually use Rexar as a sort of ranged assassin fill in in the late game with CC. It was a strategy that was used a lot by Hasuobs in season one of CCL. Yeah. So. They've got a lot of flexibility with this lineup here, which might create problems for Kirop in that top lane. It could potentially. I think the main question is what can they get done in the kind of like levels 1 to 10 or even like 1 to 13 range before Zeratul scales into the late game, gets online and, and takes control of it. And I feel like I say that time and time and again when it comes to Granite Gaming, like how much can they get in the early game? Can <laughs> they have that early game momentum and allow that to, you know, help them scale forward so as to not allow the members of Simplicity to get into even footing in the late game? Generally, Simplicity is a good team at stemming the bleeding playing safe, playing that macro style, so yeah. even if they lose kills, they can still ma maintain even an XP. 
So I'm still going to, I think, I'm going to give the advantage over to uh, Simplicity in this matchup. But uh, I want to be proven wrong. I want to see Granite Gaming not only translate early game success into, into kills, but into a, a higher macro play as well. Or better macro play. Well, let's get it started. Let's see if the Medivh Zeratul combo is enough to Five, close out four, this series. As on the left hand side, it two, is Simplicity 1 0 up. Kieran at Zeratul hosting on Medivh Legacy on Brightwing, Lutano on Sylvanas, and Masquerade with a hard engage bringing out the Diablo. And over on the right hand side, we're going to have Granite Gaming down 0 1, but not out. Ultralisk on the Imperius, Henning on the Malfurion, Spoog on the Varian, Swampgrath on the Rexar, and Ty. Playing the Lime. Looking at some of these level 1 talents for starters. Unfurling Shadows for Lutano. Bit of a rarer talent these days. Already getting a little few stacks on Skook here as they try to focus it down. Masquerade is body block. Portal is there, but the CC trade not <laughs> enough. Masquerade able to escape this time. We're seeing Shadow Hunter. That likely could lead into a more auto-attack burst focus build from Zeratul as opposed to a cleave build and burn yep. the impure. Kill Diablo, goodbye frontline from this Imperius. Oh, okay. Masquerade charged to a minion. I thought it would try to kill Swampgrat though with that, but it's just going to try to bully Misha. It does get the kill. And hey, those Misha kills do add up in XP. I like them yeah. prioritizing that when they can. Love it, and it's a solid idea just to gank with the tank early before they even make it down to their appropriate lane, the bottom lane. Lutano is stacking and just gaining as <laughs> many as they can here with this Unfurling Shadows. Not going too well though, because Only their current two. stack count is two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to. At least just getting some damage out. Um, yeah. Henning is going to be able to sustain Ty though very, very well. We're not at the point where Varian is level 4 yet, so the taunts are not going to come through. You want to pair up the Li Ming with the Varian at that point, which is will be soon. Masquerade, a bit of a uh, engage onto Ultralis. And again, and we'll completely body blocks though, no way out. He's used his charge, he just had no escape there. So good kill, and we have Simplicity making the most of their team's mobility. And the ability to just body block people forever, even going a little bit deep, looking for heading the Skook. See the damage output he's getting with this level 1 overpower for that extra heroic strike. But it's not enough so far to turn fights as they're still outnumbered most of the fights they've taken. Yeah, and now Medivh's going to keep control over this rotation, or at least vision over the rotation. Knowing where Varian is is going to be the key. Don't want to get picked out by that. So Masquerade once again rotates to the top lane. But Lutano, okay, going to get engaged upon. But the shield is there, the portal is there, but he's not going to be able to go through it. Maybe just walked away from it, thought that the haunting yeah. wave would get him to safety, <laughs> but underestimated the damage of Granite Gaming. Nice, nice kill there. Yeah, second kill in the game. First one for Granite Gaming, so they're able to even up a little bit more. And actually, Granite Gaming have a pretty solid experience lead here. Being able to soak up pretty well, but you're able to make a lot of it back up in this top lane. Misha, though, positioned on the point. You've got to step a little bit further forward from Grotter. Leash <laughs> range is a little bit longer than the tower range. Here comes the dive onto the back line. Fantastic! Taunt to keep heading safe. The spear follow up is good. It's percentage damage ultimus, but he needs that follow up. He needs to leave Ming to finish these kills. That's the CC that Granite Gaming was lacking game number one. They have it now, and we see what they can do with it. Nearly is getting some of these kills, but Hosty, of course, with the Medieval Factor, is able to protect so well. They know how to stall this shrine out as well. Legacy going to be able to uh, stall, and then Hosty if needed. Now. Zeratul is able to get control over the top shrine. Masquerade yet again. It seems like he's living in the top lane right now. Just not he allowing is. Rexar to have fun. An unusual rotation in terms of where your tank is positioned, but it seems to be working. Calamity just dropped on Lutano there, trying to keep the pressure going. Masquerade zoning away from the Dragon Knight. And Cure getting vision, but he's going to be spotted by Ultralisk and Skoog. They decide not to go for the charge. Yeah, maybe not light in range as soon as uh, Kira blinked on out of there. I suppose Simplicity, they're not the team that is going to be getting kills in the early game. Usually, they're just going to be kind of playing damage mitigation and mitigate Masquerade's death here. Ty combo comes out, but oh, the poor of the safety. Staying alive for the moment. Level 10 approaching for both teams. Brightwing's gone for that critical mist, by the way. Not going to go with that peekaboo, going for the sustain. Nice interrupt from bot lane by Lutano, preventing the first Dragonite going over to Granite Gaming. And Medivh finishes stacking, finishes that Arcane Rift. 
Alright, that is pretty early actually. Now Medivh can go in, can go dive, but nah, I probably still still shouldn't. But it, it is nice to be able to uh not have to worry about that one. Uh -oh. Spear percentage damage from that Imperius chasing in, but Brightwing in the root cleanses them out though with that critical miss to gets them both away. Alright, so the cleansing come through would have eaten Leaming Orb, probably the missiles as well. Might not have killed, but would have at least chunked legacy down very low. Here is, of course, losing this offlane, trying to get a bit of turn damage onto Swamp Grotha, but, uh, yeah, it's gonna be very low. Your Zeratul, you can't win that lane, unfortunately. Sit all right into the roots as Diablo comes through the portal. Goodbye, Lutano! The Imperious Burst showing up here, Torn for the full off as well. And Another yeah, one? you only have so many Force of Wills, the CC trade working out here. And that was fantastically played by Granite Gaming. Legacy now forced to uh, rotate into the top lane, port up here to, you know, heal, cure up, because he's been taking so much damage, trying to clear the wave, but also to get the shrine control up there as well. Skoog, with a rotation, can he catch cure? Yes! Can cure get out of here? No, there's no way. Oh, the trade kill actually comes through! It's the kill. Scoob now has to back away as he is 2v1. Optimisk arrives to reinforce using that Holy Verba to wave clear. The Imperious rotating, sometimes covering for that Rexar. As we predicted, the mage battle. Leyline dodged <laughs> with the teleport. Ty needs to grab some health from somewhere. I has to back, it looks. Oh no, just. Uh, oh, not even. Doesn't even have the tab. It's just sitting behind the tower. Waiting for orbs to uh, regeneration globes, waiting for heading to rotate back down. OC's gonna have to give up control of this bottom shrine. Meanwhile, bright wing up in top. And, uh, you know, no DK pressure. Not a lot of DK pressure yet. It's really just simplicity trying to send the bleeding, run Granite Gaming around, and just scale up to these level 10s and, and, and further. I'm secured by Simplicity. The silence came out from Wailing Arrow, forcing the retreat out of Granite Gaming. Flip onto Scoog, who's being bloody blocked beautifully by Masquerade. But the healing's still there. It's enough to guarantee the kill. Not bad from Simplicity finding the kill. Rapid Jiris though, through the portal to try and turn the kill kills around. But now Ultramisk is finding himself in enemy territory. He's very zoned. He needs healing. Henning's doing his best, and the root saves the day. A root, a nice moonfire gets Ultralisk the healing that he needs. They did lose one though from the Varian. Here, making sure Swamp Grotha cannot get the DK. Masquerade comes through the portal, trying to bully Misha out, but actually charges her to safety. Getting a kill though is nice, gonna be evening up the XP a little bit, but still there's a lot of Merc camps uh, that have not been prioritized very highly. But now, oh, what? the taunt! Here though, just blows him up, getting out of the talk from the ley line. Wormholt back in, nearly gets themselves caught. Nice stun from Misha, but there's no follow-up. Mount Furion was just chased down by Cure there. Oh. Power of the Zeratul build now that it's online with that Mice of the Nerezim. Malfurion needs help. He, if he can't land a route, he will die to Zeratul if he doesn't get help. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of bruisers to try to, you know, CC, try to peel, but there's also going to be the follow up, right? There's a lot of Sylvanas damage that comes through. Sylvanas is stacking up this whole entire yeah, time that. as well, up to 64. All right, not bad. The damage will be pretty solid. Um, Hosty as well, completing the quest, there's a lot of follow-up damage, hard to deal with. Another even XP, Hosty should be able to get on out of here and does. Nice pathing to Bob's side of the portal to make sure Skoog cannot close the gap. That's an experienced Medi player right there. Down goes Misha, the four-man gank up in top lane, which is turning into a Black Arrow's push, being countered by the Bruiser Cap in the bot lane. Hosty sees this is happening, Cure diving under keep to under fort to go for some Grotter, trades a lot of damage, right when coming in, and that is enough. Nicely done, just the slow trickling of allies to guarantee the kill. Yeah, making sure that Rexar has is forced to stay there and kind of auto-cure to pressure him off, but then Cure says, you know, I'm going back in, Breming has port up, some great team play. Obviously, this team is very practiced with that Zero Tool style, and the global is coming to support him. And they got the priority on the push as well. Sure, Granite Gaming did get the bottom bruisers, and now Simplicity has to respond to that, but it is a fort for fort trade. Simplicity were the team that was first to 13. It was by like a, a couple of seconds, if even that. But now Simplicity is half a level ahead with that kill. They're going to, you know, be in the, in, in the driver's seat at this point. Granite Gaming is, is, is not. Granite Gaming is uh, kind of falling behind at this point. 
need a way to catch up, and they do have some very good late game and, quite frankly, all game kill potential. They just yeah. haven't been able to find those opportunities yet. This next Dragonite -like could be their opportunity if they could try and force a fight over it, but they need to get back control of top first. And with Rexa having that lane pushed up, this Bruiser Camp will help them get back in range of that Sun Altar. Or they could come down and help the team. Yeah, it looks like maybe a 5v5 fight. Brewing Skoog is going to run towards the Medivh. Oh, Taunt, Hosey's wow. going to fall here. Oh, so much damage. They get Brewing as well. Brewing trying to save Medivh, but it was not going to be the case Single ball. now. Or is <gasps> oh, no, he can't. Oh. Why can't that go over a wall? What was the case? But now oh, he goes wait. anyway. <laughs> that can't go over walls? Apparently not. Why? <laughs> I don't know, you're in the sky! The wall is not that tall! <laughs> uh, there's no reason! Either way, Diablo does fall there, the souls are reset. Nice aggression from Granite Gaming. I didn't expect them to, to kind of come back with that amount of, uh, of, of kind of um, oomph, but they do. Now Cure trying to turn around oh, Lutano dude. there for the damage. This is so much damage! Lutano, the Cure Bait, the follow-up, it's so much spread damage with that Shadow oh. Dagger build. They just blow them up here. Ultralisk is being chased. He will not escape here. He's just doing as much damage as he can on the way out, leaving just Ty on that Lee Big alone. And all they can really do is just rush down bot, poke at it, try to slow the rotations and give their team time to respawn, mm. and also nearly kill Zeratul, apparently. That was a nice combo. Um, I think good that you didn't over uh, overcommit to that kill, because Ty could have gotten punished for it and just chained deaths. That being said, oh, another combo, <laughs> narrowly, narrowly dodged there by Kier. Granite Gaming had a glimmer of hope, but it was very quickly snuffed out by Simplicity being the uh, just seemingly like better team. They know in what scenarios they can get away with. Kier controlling the game so well. Now they get a DK. Masquerade is going to survive. Already back up to 69 souls, now 70. Probably gonna get 100 by the time this push gets to the keep walls. Maybe a bit after that. They're gonna try and blow him up before that taunt charge. There's the force of will, but he's caught in the root. There's no fort to help them out. Misha stun, but they're not committing. Health bars are too low, and Lutano is spreading that shadow dagger damage out. At 112 stacks on the shadow dagger. Here we go. Now, it looks like they're not putting their attention to the keep ball, but instead to the bottom lane fort. About a full level lead for Simplicity at this point. Diablo not quite with full souls, so maybe they want to wait until they fight for that. Granite Gaming, though, they're going to look for opportunities. Pahosi's keeping tabs on all of them so very well. Granite Gaming needs to find something, and it's going to be maybe invading a, a Merc camp when it's up. Like, Scoog is running at Lutado right now. But... Lusty arrives back. To get yeah. the vision. Hosty just knows where, where they all are. It's so hard for them to actually do anything with Medivh being that, that a pesky bird. Their entire composition is built on running at someone and killing them, and when the enemy knows where you are, their strategy could just be run away and kill the one person who isn't with your team. Goodbye. Oh, delay. You got a couple seconds. Oh, There's Layla. The oh, no. Into the APOC, they get the one kill on Rexar, and now a follow up on to Malfurion. Hosty actually does. Uh, fall over, got counter killed. Nice combo by Ty and CC by Ultralisk. But still very worth it from Simplicity. They're so low now. Cure trying to find where Ultralisk is, see if he can get the finishing blow. Ty is also low. If Ultralisk fishes out where he is, if Cure is able to dive over that wall and find Ty, that Shadow Dagger, you gotta run! Zeratul, oh. double blink! But the escape from Ty is barely there. If Ty didn't have blink up at the exact moment, that would have been Ty falling over. Fortunately, it did have it up. Yourselves, but now Simplicity is going to be on uh, level 20s soon as the shrines come back up. If Simplicity are able to achieve any DK with 20 advantage, they could use it to uh, win the game. We'll see if they're able to get in that scenario. Still a couple seconds on Medivh respawning, so if Granite Gaming are going to get a kill, it has to be soon. But no, they're going to turn their attention to the Merc Camp. Try to even out this XP as much as they can. Gonna blast their way through this, get a little bit of pressure down on that bot lane, a little bit of spell armor if they end up fighting down here. And they're just grouping. The hope of Granite Gaming right now is to just blow people up, look for those leaming resets. And once again, though, they can't get the drop. And immediately, because they know Simplicity know exactly where Granite Gaming are, they end up sealing the opponent's Bruiser Camp. They have pressure on top lane. 
Manic Gaming just don't have the control they need, and they don't have the ability they need to gain the positioning on the map to get simplicity. No, not at all. I mean, Ultralisk is trying to CC's Masquerade, but says, all right, that's cute, walks away. Like, they can't really follow up. The members aren't just, just aren't there. Uh, now the DK is going to be pressured. Sylvanas is going to be capping this bottom shrine. Running in circles. Zeratul already prepped to uh, enter. Level 20 is a full level away from Granite Gaming. They could just play this very slow. Like, this game probably actually won't end here. They are going to go through this bottom fort. Go through bottom keep, and then maybe go to uh, mid keep after that as well. Um, so Granite Gaming has time to, to pick up kills. Maybe like a Lee Ming level 20 repulsion can um can, can get some value here. You, you can't just get the initial burst kill like run at one member because of the factor. The thing that Granite Gaming probably has to like bait out some cooldowns, then look to to just uh, follow up CC on another member on a backliner, maybe on a bright wing as soon as she try to port in to save the first member. Portal mastery one portal. Exit being placed, the other one could be placed instantly for Masquerade to engage. You can see Scoob is trying every now and again to charge forward and try and bait out a Force of Will. Ty, good pull on the Dragonite, that's going to save the block oh. damage. Oh, Ultralis caught in the rotation though. I think he's caught, Zeratul? Okay, he's not caught. I thought maybe Gear went a little bit too deep with the DK, but uh, did not. Now they're gonna kill, and Splissy does such a good job at, at picking off the off lane or the side lane members of Granite Gaming every single time. Now they're going to be oh. able to push on in. Unstoppable Lutano getting a bit frisky there, but is able to. Using the man advantage. Oh, no. The walls come out with Kill Commander is the root, but just results in the dead there. This is a withering barrage game for Lutano, by the way. Getting those extra Banshee's curse applications so he gets more damage. Good blink away from Ty. They turn on Cure, but it's not enough. Where's the damage? Leyline into a pop for the second time. Only catches the Varian, but they have a lot of damage. Skook survives this time. Yeah, a bit of a, a bit, bit not of a, uh, a well-timed combo there from Simplicity. The 20 ley line, maybe they're not as uh, already used to it, but ooh, okay, a lot of damage actually coming out onto Kier. He does blink out. Now Ultralisk is back. This is the time where Granite Gaming needs to keep Simplicity interested if they want to uh, to, to get some much-needed kills. There's the charge, Kier in the back line, trying to pressure Heading and tie Heading, able to back up underneath that keep the... Uh, the end. The Wrath of Angeris was used there, but it's not enough for the kill. Great charge from Optimus, but it's cleansed out quickly. Here oh. comes the ley line and the healing from Brightwing may have just ended this fight. Ultimus getting CC'd out of base. A cure! Oh. Picking up the kill on Ty. That's all the damage eliminated. And he lives as well. The icing on top. Heading going to be the next member to fall. Maybe Masquerade gets the charge. Gets the flip. Ooh. No? Okay, here we go. Heading still survives though. The Cure's already working on the core. With the rest of the members, I believe this will be Simplicity 2 owing it. But they're trying to have some fun. They're trying to pad the stats right now. And they're going to do that as well as get the core kill on the end of things here. Tetcher 2-0 for Simplicity looking so dominant over the course of those two games. Not respecting the Heading Masquerade 1v1, but 100% respecting <laughs> their title as the best currently. Simplicity take the 2-0 and they move on to the Grand Finals. Man, I, I had hope for Granite Gaming leading into that series because of how well they played earlier into Wildheart. Um, but Simplicity were just uh, on top of their game. They were on top of, I think, the drafts and that was a big one. Um, Simplicity, I think, hardcore won the draft in both games, um, and I'm not quite sure like why. It seems like Granite Gaming probably should have been able to have um, some better drafts, especially in Game 1. Game 2, it wasn't quite as much of a draft gap, uh, but still, I mean, as we see from the stats on the screen, Lutano got to do so much damage pretty much for yeah. free that whole time um, <laughs> with the stacking of <laughs> that Unfurling Shadows. And then the Zeratul scaling. I mean, Kira only died once, had 70k damage. The Medivh being played by Hosty there is always a treat to watch. It just it all goes so well together. Like, this draft is just so well executed from Simplicity. It's hard for Granite Gaming to do anything even with their perfect draft. Yeah, they had so much CC, they had everything, but it was all about the macro and the control from Simplicity. Almost all of Simplicity's kills were catching people on rotations. Yep. Or in individual lanes, while Medivh just saw exactly where Granite was. So Granite never got the positioning control they wanted. Yeah, now looking forward to the future. 
Uh, do we know who won the other series? We it do. looks like actually. Look at the bracket. A 30k. One against can't censor ship. So we get a bit of a uh, simplicity versus 30k yeah. grand finals. That's gonna be a good one. Very fun to see. 30k, who had a great performance in the earlier part of the CCL season, did fall off a little bit, but they did a great they did perform very well in CCL in general, getting third place overall. I believe they did not get the chance to play. They did play Simplicity in the playoffs, yeah. actually. In losers round one, two. in a 3-2. Yeah. Ooh, that's it exciting. It was close. <laughs> it yeah. was close, yeah. It was a 3-2, <laughs> which makes me think that this series could be uh, pretty hype. Uh, hopefully not a 2-0, because 2 O's are, you know, kind of kind of boring to watch. Kind of resident sleeper. Um, so hopefully able to, to, to get a, uh, um, I guess, a nice footing into the dominance that Simplicity has been able to establish. But then we also have our third place match as well. See who's going to uh, uh, be third at the end of things between Granite Gaming and Can't Censor Ship. Can't Censor Ship performing very well to get to this point. A the, one of the yep. only two non-CCL teams able to defeat a CCL team in the form of Diamond Hands, make it all the way to the semis. They did not take a map off of 30k, but perhaps they'll be able to do so versus Granite Gaming or Granite Gaming VCs some honor. They still appear to be under the Lulba Rap curse. But let's see if they can get some points on the board here. But, like I said, our grand finals. 30k, simplicity, a rivalry that's lasted all season. Yeah. Now is their final attempt at to, to decide until next ECL season. This is probably the last time for a while these two teams are going to get the chance to play each other in an official capacity. True, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure when the <laughs> next ECL yeah. things will start back <laughs> up, but it's going to be a while. I'm going to miss it. I always like watching some high level here's the storm competition. Always uh, gets me gets me in my nostalgia, I guess I'll say. So love seeing this action. <laughs> but the grand finals they're talking about, it's going to once again be supposed to be 30k. That will be me stepping on out of here and then you and Jinxie Cat bringing us that action. So that should once again be a ton of fun. I miss you. You're the best. <laughs> miss you too. <laughs> Oh man, it'll be maybe a, a bit until we get to cast again in some capacity, oh but God, I'll be yeah. looking forward to it. I'll be looking we'll forward figure to something it. out. We will get we will. something, but it has been a pleasure, Crowd. Thank you for joining us, and thank you all for joining us. Please hang around for a little bit longer, because after this break, it will be time for the Grand Finals between Simplicity and 30k. Don't go anywhere.